when you think about the potential progress of black struggles and however whatever way you frame that against anti-black oppression, are you hopeful when you look at the generations behind you? And if so, I'd like to hear a little bit about what inspires that hope. And if you're not, I'd like to hear a little bit more about how we can make you hope. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, 
it's a miracle in some way that we survive. But it's not a miracle because we survive because of, of course, our own struggles. The, but we connect this with the other question of preparation. Sometimes I, I want to laugh uh, at this kind of situation, either about Haiti or Argentina, but let's say Haiti and liberation. Because actually, it's, in the case of Africa, I know for sure, it's Africa and African peoples who actually have been giving, will be donors, economic donors to the West as a whole. And yes, anybody to pay reparations, both structural and practical, is really surely Europe or the West generally, not the other way around. But I'm getting amused that when it comes to Haiti, you pay the debt, when it comes to uh, as France or Europe or the West to pay back, they are horrified. How can you say that? You know? yeah. So to me, there is a lot of hope. Uh, and we can get strength from where we have come from. And it's where we know the reasons why we are where we are is because of struggles which have gone on before. You know, if you say, we have survived, <coughs> why don't we survive? And if we learn the correct reasons why we have survived, then we shall continue to thrive. But if we, of course, learn the wrong reason, if we think that this freedom was given to us on a silver platter, or we think because of generosity of the West, some parade were very kind, you know, and or the generosity of the, of the, of the, of the corporate world, and that they were so generous, oh, how good to, right? Then we shall be learning the wrong reason. And the reason I mentioned this is because I think, quite frankly, a certain the dominant ruling classes in Africa have learned the wrong reason, okay, of our survival. The thing is by a certain causeliness to the corporate West that makes us be where we are rather than the other way around, the way of James, the way of the boys, the way of another one we've not mentioned a lot in the conference, the way of Galvin. Thank you. Yes, it is right. Um, <laughs> uh, I just have several things. Joyce Mitchell Cook was a great philosopher. She recently passed um, at Howard University. I first met her, I think it was about 1980 um, or so. I went to read her doctoral dissertation. The dissertation was on the theory of value. Uh, very few people had uh, written on that subject, and she certainly didn't know that. Brown was studying her doctoral dissertation because couldn't find anything to write. Um, William R. Jones recently passed. He was the author of uh, uh, His God of Light Racism, and other things. And we honor him in philosophy on struggle for about eight years uh, before he passed. I'm really glad we did that. Um, um, and so, my, my, my point, I guess, in part, is that the older generations will pass, but we've learned from them, but this newer generation has to continue more than any of them. Um, we pass the time in many ways, but in, you have to be creative in your own way. So I have hope. I mean, the hope is in the sense that um, you'll, you'll, you'll continue on with the struggle um, in ways in which I never imagined. Um, and it's now, it's now 2014, all the philosophers I met in 1973 in the University of Bad Island have long since passed, all the philosophers that I met um, in Ghana, um, uh, those who were uh, at the uh, University of Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, um, those who were writing Carl Sumner, uh, an institution in, 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 in uh, the University of Addis Ababa transferring the books of the Oromo, transferring the books of the 16th century African philosophers, not passed. Um, his works continue, though, however. Um, 
the, uh, the women at the, the uh, Shakyam at the uh, University in, in uh, Essex and Bioethical Ethics will continue on new, with, with their own path, their own visions. It won't be the same visions that I have, but it'll be new visions. Um, so I built it, and I tried to build on the past, but also leave something for the future. Um, so in some ways, hope is sort of an illusion. Hope is what it is that you make it. Hope is there, and it will be there. So I have perfect confidence in the possible future. Um, no confidence that I don't know exactly what it looks like. <laughs> but I hope we have made some contribution. Um, there's now an archive, Philosophy of Struggle at Purdue University, it has a large collection of videos. I videotaped for 20 years, uh, black men and women, and asked them, what, do, what is the name of your philosophy? What do you believe? Uh, paid for the video camera, paid for them, all, the, all the tapes. I uh, went and asked them. We recorded every one of their presentations. When nobody was recording, nobody asked them, um, what do you believe? What is your name of your philosophy? Um, so I, I, I did that. And now I have an archive that uh, will be there permanently. I had a uh, place on DVD so that you can study what it is that they've said. Um, an item for an item. Um, we've had a, a meeting of a, 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 a philosopher, some uh, South America, the Caribbean, and Africa in four and three different languages. Most black people in America don't speak the one language, which means that you cannot talk to most black people on the planet. Um, so we had a translation in French, Portuguese, and Spanish, so that folks from Cameroon, from Chad, uh, could talk to people from Argentina, from Peru, uh, from Cuba, about their common projects from Chicago, uh, from Mississippi, from from, from the land of Georgia to Augusta, Georgia. What are your common projects? Women and men have never met one another across those lines, learned that they had a common project, even across languages. Um, so I have a good confidence in the future. Um, and um, I think I think what, what, what I need to say is, you know, um, I need to continue on, the struggle continues. Very brief remarks. Uh, one about the question of hope in the future. Um, I, you, there's no way of predicting what your work, what kind of impact it will have in the future. If I look back on my current work, my last book on Richard Wright, using Fanon, using Marx, using Freud, and I look back on it, and Marx and Freud and Fanon had no idea I would exist, or that I would put it together, right? So, so yeah, you just gotta have faith that somebody will do something with it. That would be interesting. And uh, I would add that having heard your talk earlier today about your dissertation, I have no doubts in my mind whatsoever that it's going to have a major impact. So I can guarantee that. Um, regarding the Supreme Court decision, I, it's, I feel very sad to say this is the same old story. This is what colonialism and imperialism has been all about forever. It's a transfer of resources and wealth one form or another, you know, it's either through colonial occupation, after that becomes not viable because of Iraq, you can't invade and control, then there's another kind of colonialism which has been evolving, which I would like to call hegemonic colonialism, whereas the control of IMF and the rules of monetary exchange and loans and policies, and one way or the other, it's all about the, the flow of resources from one side to the other. How, how we fight with that. Um, so Cesar said, Je parle et je rends l'Afrique au monde. Um, when Aimé Cesar was saying this, I think he knew that somehow we will survive. And we are surviving. So there's lots of hope. I think, um, you know, from one generation to another generation, uh, yes, we have to keep going. We have to keep uh, uh, creativity going. I think, uh, for example, in the continent of Africa, it's, it's interesting. People always talk about the place as if people do not live there. There's so many people that live there, and they're surviving. Yeah, I mean, I'm always amazed. People say, so, wow, it's so sad. You have uh, all these diseases. You have poverty. Yeah, but people are, are surviving. People are living. 
you know, and with the spirit, with spirit. Whenever you go to Africa, you come back full of it. You know, there's something going on in that continent that, you know, at least keeps all of us alive, I think. So there's hope. And I think um, you have to be, use your own generation and uh, be creative, you know. Um, do not forget where your creativity comes from, but um, keep it up, there's hope. I believe so. so. so talking about that, you can add very quickly. It's about generation. It's very interesting. Uh, when you said, read by my own daughter, who, uh, who has discovered phenomenon in her own way. So, and I don't know how much she knew the impact of phenomenon on her own life, but for some reason, she came back home and she was talking about, you know, uh, Fanon's, you know, uh, writings on Algeria. That's really what fascinates her, you know, all the time. She was giving some lectures on Fanon. And now I must read Fanon. Because by using those writings, she was also able to I mean, so connect Fanon and Algeria and now uh, uh, through Vietnam somehow or other and now come discovered our own history in Kenya. So I agree with you. So generations, you know, come and interpret, you know, uh, what they inherited, you know, their own way and advance, you know, uh, that vision and struggle. You know, there are these unusual ways that things are connected. Um, you could imagine in many ways, Abdul, as you thought about the fact that things you faced when you were writing, and that one of the chapters was on a, a movie. Or even what Leonard faced when he did philosophy of Warner's took nine years to get it published. Because um, the response, the attitude was that um, presumption of black people read philosophy, or is that, or that the only audience could be black for a book dealing with African-American philosophers. But your people who persevere, that's the point. Frida, the stuff you're struggling with, you're facing, this is, as I said, a thank you, but it's also to let you know, as we say, we got your back. We're here together, we publicly, we'll just say, no, we will not tolerate the degradation of our sisters and brothers. And we noticed you in that struggle. We talked about it. We supported it. We, there are others here, Lyndon, he knows, for instance, the initiatives we have, or Jackie Martinez, around this very question of what it is that we cannot just simply put a little line and say that we'll just stop with dignity here. Some of the things that Googie may not know, and some of you may not know, but Sapria brought it up, was, you know, the Caribbean Philosophical Association was founded around ordering jerk chicken in, the chicken in Jamaica and debates. And it was at a meeting in which the person being honored was George Lanning. And Sylvia Witt was there, and Ungugi Wakyongo was there. And Ungugi Ngu, doesn't realize the extent to which he was both connected to and inspired much of what we're 